Hello everyone. Welcome back to my channel, Ordinary Data Scientist, where we talk about data science. So friends, in previous lectures, we were looking at the concepts uh, from the chapter 4, Probability, where we talk about different kind of concepts, right? Uh, like what is, how do we calculate probability? What do we mean by probability? What kind of uh, things we need to consider while calculating the probability and then all those things? Some use cases uh, regarding business use case, some, some statistical use case and all those things. We'll look into those examples also, you know, uh, for example, we'll look into what is the difference between a population parameter and sample uh, static statistic and all right. Uh, then we went to calculate certain probabilities by uh, by looking at the structure of probability, like what is an experiment, what is an event, what is the uh, sample space, some trees, you know, all those things, right? So today let's talk about four types of probability, okay? So there are mainly four types of probabilities, as you can see, the marginal, union, joint, and conditional. These are the four kind of probabilities that we will look into today. Now, the marginal is the easiest one, the one that we we have been looking, you know, uh, from last uh, couple of videos. So, how do we calculate the marginal probability, or what is marginal probability? You know, does mean. So, let's start with marginal probability. So, we took an example of that box that you had. Uh, four red box and let's say four blue balls sorry uh, four red balls and four blue balls what is the probability that if you pick one ball and it is a red ball so we say that the probability is number of favorable outcomes or events right number of favorable events divided by number of total events right so in this case the number of favorable events is four because there are four red balls so 4, any 4 divided by total is 8, that means 50%. So in, in this simple case, what we had like favorable cases divided by total cases, this is called the marginal probability, which is straightforward, easier to do, easier to understand, right? Total, uh, so you can see the definition also that here we had just uh, one parameter or one case where we need to uh, calculate the probability. And it's very straightforward. If I if I take this same example and if I say that hey, what is the probability that the second ball, the second ball is blue, given that given that the first ball, the first ball is red. Okay, so I want to calculate the probability of second ball being blue but i have another statement that the first ball is a red one so here i'm adding extra uh, extra condition you can say or extra uh, statement into the problem statement okay so that's when other kind of uh, other kind of probabilities comes into picture that union joint and condition okay so you can read the definition of these three uh, for example here you have the union uh, the joint and the conditional but we treat it's pretty uh, straightforward if we can uh, just look into the examples uh, you know that I will talk about you will clearly understand what is the difference between a union joint and condition okay so let's start with small small example for each three cases and then we will go into little bit details of their formula and all this so, okay so second one was union probability now in terms of union when you understand union you know we have like farmer unions or labor union and all those kind of thing union means a combination right combination or you say uh, 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 mix you know or you can say that collection right so here what does it mean that you will have Two events let's say a and b and you need to calculate the probability of a union b that means either your a occur b doesn't occur 
or it can happen that a doesn't occur but b occurs a zero means doesn't occur one means occurs okay as for this example and a also occurs at the same time b also occurs that means we got like this kind of uh, situation you know where a occurs b doesn't occur a doesn't occur b occurs a occur and b occurs all together what is the probability that any one such case will happen okay that is called the union a union b a union b means you know uh, either a or b or both occurs okay that is called a union b it's a huge subset okay now joint joint probability let's quickly uh, understand the uh, the concept and then definitely we'll go through some of the examples also now joint probability is denoted as this intersection okay so what does it mean so in the joint probability out of this three case only this case is considered only this case when a and b both occur together okay and this is denoted as intersection b or you can say this no no ulta u okay this is union and this is kind of a your inverted union okay this is called intersection that means that probability of a and b occurring together they will occur together now conditional conditional probability let's quickly go through the the definition statement first and then we will see some examples also in the in the conditional uh, probability the occurrence of a will depend on occurrence of b okay so we will put in condition whether b occurs or doesn't occur so for example if i say that what is the uh, the probability of event a occurring given that given that uh, b has occurred b has already occurred you know this kind of thing so here we say that what is the probability of b and we put a vertical line and call it b so that means what is the probability of a given that b has already happened this is called your conditional probability okay now coming back to, to the book uh, you can see that the marginal probability was very straightforward where you need to divide it uh, by the uh, total total number of uh, outcomes okay in case of uh, uh, union also somewhere you need to divide uh, denominated by the total outcome in joint also you need to divide by total outcome but in terms of conditional probability we'll look into the formula but here uh, it won't be the total outcome actually it will be a subtotal subtotal of the possible outcomes and that we will look into uh, the picture below or the examples uh, below okay now uh, i'll explain how to calculate the union and this is called the addition laws also okay just keep it in mind now let's look into the uh, the derivation of union union probability pro probability or we call it addition law also so we have addition laws multiplication laws base laws and all so we will talk about the addition law first so as i said that hey what is the probability of a union b that means all three cases that a happens b doesn't happen b happens a doesn't happen and all uh, and both happen together right so to uh, visualize this union joint and connection we use these Venn diagrams okay so in one circle this represents the probability of a and then 
this red circle denotes the probability of B. So entire this white circle, you know, uh, will be probability of A. It can be 0 0.5, 0 0.6 or whatever. Similarly, this red circle entire area will be probability of B, which can be 50%, 70%, 80%, whatever. Okay. And then this, the, the middle area, you see, I'm highlighting with the this color, different color, is the intersection where A and B are occurring together, right? This, this area is that area of interest where A and B occurs together, okay? Now, P union B, that means the probability of A can happen. So, as I told you, all three cases are, prob uh, uh, are possible, right? That probability of A, probability of B, or probability of A and B. You know, all three cases are possible. Now, if I write into the formula that what is the probability of A, so I'll say that, okay, P of A, probability of B, that I'll say that probability of B, okay? Now, when I say that probability of A, this entire area comes, when I say probability of B, again, this entire area comes. Now, what is happening that due to, due to this overlap, because this white circle and red circle has this overlap of this this area you know this area is calculating or getting counted twice once in this circle and another in this circle right this area coming twice so that's why we have to subtract that area from the formula and we call it a intersection p that means P of A plus P of B minus P intersection or P A intersection B. Okay, where this is the common area. Now, people, please remember this formula is is uh, is applicable when there is uh, there is dependent events. Now, if there are independent events or mutually exclusive events, independent events, let's say what is the probability that it will rain and what is the probability, you know, that, uh, what is the probability that it will rain and what is the probability that I'll pick a white ball from a box are completely independent event right this event will not depend what is the weather of today right is it it so if i say that hey what is the probability of p a union b that either this happens or that b happens or, or together happens if i write the formula again a plus b minus a intersection b because this events these events a and b are completely independent of each other there won't be any intersection like if, if i draw the Venn diagram in this case a will happen a will look like this and b will completely look like this there won't be any kind of intersection between these two cases so by default this becomes zero so that's why the formula remains p plus p of a plus p of p okay so the original formula is this one only if you want to remember you should remember this formula but you have to also remember if the events a and b are completely independent mutually exclusive you can get rid of the third component also as there won't be any overlap okay so this is the formula of union and also we call it addition law okay so you will find the formula here uh, you can quickly solve some of the uh, some of the problems uh, statement here also let's quickly go through one of the uh, one of the problem statement now it says that uh, some some partners they conducted a survey you know uh, and in the survey they find uh, they they try they try to find the reason you know how to increase the productivity in the office that's the that's the objective of the survey that they want to find that how to increase the productivity in the office by 
making some changes in the design. Now 70% of the workers says that by reducing the noise they can improve the uh, they can improve the productivity while 67% people says that you know if you put more uh, storage or filling space the productivity will increase okay so if I can write this thing here that uh, that the probability of noise will increase the uh, increase the productivity is 70% and productivity that space will increase the property pro, uh, productivity is is your uh, okay let let me write it in probably uh, decimal place 0 0.7 and then 0 0.67 okay this is the probability of uh, <coughs> of noise and space if one of the survey uh, respondents was randomly selected and asked what office design changes would increase worker productivity what is the probability that this person would select reducing noise or more noise the person can select any of them right this is what he's saying so that means this statement shows me that there is a or in the condition right the statement one and statement two between them there is a or word that means anyone anything can happen a or b so that's why it's a union problem that n union s okay and we know the formula that uh, we know the formula that a uh, i'll just write the uh, p of noise is equal to 70 or 0.7 and p of space is equal to 0.67 okay now the the problem says the problem statement says that if i randomly pick a person what is the probability that person will say that either you reduce the noise or you make more stories you know it will increase the productivity so there is a or word in the statement so that's when the probability of that event that event that uh, uh, when i'm picking a person and the person agrees with either of these is p n union s so here we need to calculate the probability of that event and we are writing p n union s now we remember the formula that p of n plus p of s and minus p n intersection s let's for a second we uh, keep this uh, component aside and calculate the p of s which is 0 0.70 and p of s which is 0 0.67 and I know it becomes 1.37 now clearly the probability cannot go beyond one right we we learned that the probability can belong or can can be uh, between 0 to 1 it cannot go beyond 1 and it cannot go beyond 0 also right it cannot be negative so that means we are missing something isn't it that probability of having this kind of event is 1.37 is literally not possible that's when it's come to the in our mind that he in the Venn diagram we found and we remember that when we have this kind of events when they are dependent this area are getting calculated twice once with this circle another day with this circle that's why we have to intersect this region right so we have to intersect something and we don't know this something as of now till the information uh, here we don't know that piece what is the uh, n intersection s yes. uh, it means in here that uh, suppose 56 percent of all respondents have said that both noise and and increased in space would improve the productivity now 50 percent of the respondent says that both noise and both space will improve the the productivity that means p n intersection s is nothing but your 0.56 so if you remove the 0.656 from this you will get the result you know of uh, uh, p union p n union s right so this is the probability 
this is the probability 0.81 okay so 0.81 is the answer to that question